Hey, 49ers fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to Chat Sports, and today, fresh 49ers news and rumors. Before we start, though, use the hashtag 49ers down below to get your questions in for our mailbag that's going to go up tomorrow. So, as soon as this drops, hashtag 49ers, ask your questions down below. That way, I can answer them in tomorrow's mailbag. All right, let's start with this first, I guess, news. Maybe it's a rumor. I'll let you guys decide. George Kittle, does he possibly have a secret rib injury that is undisclosed right now to the public? So, where am I getting all this? So, George Kittle, past couple of weeks, has been wearing extra padding around the rib cage area. The same type of padding he wore last year when he had a fractured rib and played through it through the majority of the season. Kittle is not on any injury reports, so it's not like he might miss any sort of games, but it's interesting to look at some of the practice photos and also go back and watch some of the games, most likely the Seahawks game, most recently the Seahawks game in Week 17, and instead of just the normal, you know, shoulder pads with a chest protector, he has extra padding in and around this area. Now, again, he very well could have a rib injury. With all the type of shots he's been taking this season, obviously he had the lower leg injury earlier on in the season. It's very possible, and it's very probable that even if he does have it, He's just gutting it up and playing through it, getting his cortisone, getting his cortisone shots, excuse me, and just toughening it out. Is this going to be a factor going forward? No, I don't think so. I don't want to scare you guys in the idea that George Kittle is not playing at 100% because obviously he is going to be fine, but there is a very real possibility they could be doing some gamesmanship on this one and just not officially announcing it as an injury because, yeah, it's there, and yeah, it hurts and it bothers him, but he's fine, he's able to play, and they don't want to have any sort of scenario where the other team knows about it, therefore they start to take extra shots at George Kittle's chest and rib area, and rib area to try and make it even worse. We saw this literally just the other day with the Eagles tight end, Zach Ertz. Zach Ertz dealing with two fractured ribs, some rib cartilage injury, dealing with a lacerated kidney, and yet he was able to get pumped full of medication, put in a flak jacket, and rolled out there. It actually was pretty effective for Philadelphia, even though he said the pain was absolutely excruciating. So is Kittle injured right now? He's probably banged up. He's probably bruised. Does he actually have a rib injury? Unknown, but it is very interesting to take a look at what we saw over the past couple of weeks compared to where it was last year, where we found out in the you know, postseason that he essentially was playing with broken ribs, fractured ribs, whatever it was during the regular season. It's interesting to see. The big takeaway though, even if he is injured, he's still playing injured as the best tight end in the National Football League right now. We need him on Saturday against the Vikings. More on that a little bit later, but I just want to get you guys in on what I'm seeing. There could be a potential rib injury for George Kittle. He will play through it though, not showing up in any sort of injury report. It's good news for our 49ers. All right. Watch on YouTube. Don't worry about the ad. Just scroll down and go ahead and answer this pin question. In terms of the Minnesota Vikings, who are you most concerned about? The biggest weapon and threat for the Vikings against us is it Dalvin Cook? Is it Kirk Cousins? Is it Thielen? Is it Diggs? Is it Hunter? Is it? I mean, there's, there's a ton of great players on the Vikings. Who concerns you the most? Answer the question down below. All right, this is news. I know it's just talking about the 49ers jerseys, but it is news people have been asking all over Twitter. What combination will the 49ers be wearing throughout the playoffs? And I'll tell you right now, it has been revealed, most likely their red home jerseys for the playoffs. And you say, oh, well, isn't that obvious because they are playing home? Well, yeah, but they technically have the option to wear their alternate all whites as well, which I know a lot of you guys like in 49er land. They will be in though. They're all reds throughout the majority of the playoffs. And then in the Super Bowl, if they make it that far, the AFC is the home team, meaning the AFC gets to choose their jersey color combination first, meaning it could be all reds and then all white for the Super Bowl if the 49ers are able to get there. Obviously, they have home field advantage throughout the postseason. That starts this Saturday, whenever the Minnesota Vikings come into town. And of course, the Vikings most likely will be in their whites and the 49ers will be in their reds. Hard hitting big J journalism kind of stuff here on the 49ers report. Although a lot of you guys were asking, and be people tweeting me all the time saying, what jersey combinations are we going to have? For all you were wondering which jersey to pull out of your closet to wear to the game at Levi Stadium on Saturday, go ahead and wear the red one. And again, you look at the NFC playoff picture right now after the wildcard weekend, a little bit smoother right now, a little bit cleaner right now in terms of the path of the 49ers. Yes, they have Minnesota as the first game of the divisional round on Saturday. It's a 1-6 matchup. It's one of the better six seeds we've seen in a very, very long time. Dalvin Cook, one of the best running backs in the league. Kirk Cousins outplayed Drew Brees in the Superdome just a couple of days ago, and he's got great weapons, and that defensive front is going to have a real, real interesting time going up against Jimmy Garoppolo and this 49er offensive line. You get past uh, you get past the Vikings, and then you're either hosting the Saints or the Green Bay Packers, two teams that you have beat, or sorry, not the Saints, you're either hosting the Green Bay Packers, and then obviously the other team, that instead of the Saints, who actually won, would be the Seattle Seahawks. So both teams you have beaten at least once this year. Obviously, you went to Green Bay and absolutely obliterated them just a couple of weeks ago. And then Seattle, Week 17, you held on to beat them as well. I think, if we're being honest, if you get past the Vikings, 
you probably want the Green Bay Packers instead of another matchup with Seattle just because they're a divisional opponent. That's my opinion. Green Bay versus San Francisco back at Levi Stadium, NFC title game. That is where I would want to go. But I'm curious, in terms of the Vikings game, will the 49ers win this by double digits? Because right now, I think they're about seven and a half point favorites to win this game according to the line. It's shifting a little bit. Do you think the 49ers will win by double digits? Type Y down below for yes. Type N down below for no. If you type Y down below for yes, then you should probably bet on the 49ers as well because you're feeling pretty confident. Why don't you use our friends at BetDSI, chatsports.com forward slash bet. Use the promo code 49ers. Get yourself a 120% deposit bonus. It's still here for the postseason whenever you first sign up. So you haven't bet on the Niners all year long. You want to bet on them now because they're actually going to win the Super Bowl, right? Go ahead, use our promo code chatsports.com forward slash bet promo code 49ers. This was mentioned yesterday in Tom Downey's video here on the channel. I wanted to get it to you guys one more time. Kwan Alexander might play on Saturday. Now, there is a lot of reports saying Kwan Alexander, our star linebacker, who's been out for a very, very long time with a torn pec, basically the entire season, a couple games in there, could play on Saturday. Now, that's the, that's the report out there. He might. People are taking this as, oh my goodness, he was supposed to play in the NFC title game, he's ahead of schedule, he's gonna play on Saturday. No, I would wanna stress this very, very clearly. Just because there is a chance he can play does not mean he will play. And as you get closer and closer to game time on Saturday, the Niners could watch him practice because he's not actually been able to get hit the past couple of days and go, you know what? Let's just hold him out one more week the way he's actually 100% fresh for the NFC title game. We saw what J.J. Watt was able to do for the Houston Texans on Saturday afternoon against the Buffalo Bills. He came back from that torn pec, looked pretty good, had a sack, but also said at the end of the game, because they went overtime, he probably played a little bit too much on that injury. So the same can be said about trying to limit Quan Alexander's snaps. If he plays, it will not be 100% of the snaps in terms of what he normally would play. So Greenlaw will get to mix in there with some of the snaps. If he doesn't play, then that's them trying to protect him for one more week, get him ready for the NFC title game. So I know it's out there. He's probably going to play on Saturday. He could play on Saturday. Oh my gosh, what a miracle recovery. Yes, that is all true. We do not know how effective he, he will be if he does play. We do not know how many snaps he will be able to play. It will be on a pitch count, most likely. And again, he might not actually play. I'm trying not to be a glass half empty kind of guy. I want Juan Alexander to play. He's the best middle linebacker, best outside linebacker, I should say on our squad because he's better than Greenlaw. He's obviously better than Al Shire. But at the same time, I want to temper the expectations just a little bit in case he rolls out there. And one, they say game time, mm, not going to play him. Or two, he's just not as effective as people would come to expect. If you guys have not subscribed to our 49ers only chat sports YouTube channel, we're growing at a crazy good rate. Click the red subscribe button, get us to 12,000. I would greatly appreciate that. All right, before we move on, Couple of quick sale items here where you know the drill, right? Chatsports.com forward slash 49 sale. Takes you to a bunch of authentic 49ers gear. You order now, it'll be there before the NFC title game, and especially for the divisional round as well. Hats, t-shirts, sweaters, sweatshirts, everything you can ask for. Just, just put up in your Google link, chatsports.com slash 49 sale. And also, not uh, they actually still have some of these NFC West. The West is not enough. Divisional championship t-shirts, chatsports.com slash NFC West. Go ahead and check both of those out. Final bit of news here regarding Joe Staley. And this will be a lot of what we do in the offseason in terms of free agency and who they're going to sign and who they could trade for, who could retire. Joe Staley, though, our star left tackle, was asked a lot this week about possibly retiring. And he had a very interesting response. So Staley is actually signed through 2021. People tend to forget that he's not a free agent this year. They offered him and gave him a contract extension through next season. So he is signed. But he dealt with multiple injuries, the knee, the finger. And there's a lot of speculation that he might retire. Well, when asked about it a couple days ago by our press, he said, quote, no, I don't know why everybody's been asking me that question because I've got injured. Everybody's like, oh, you're going to be retiring now. Nope, I just signed a contract here. I still love playing football. It's like the ninth time someone's asked me that. I'm starting to wonder why. This to me says Staley's not going anywhere. He's going to come back and try and compete for that star left tackle spot. And the question is, do the Niners want to give him one more year in terms of paying him, which they did, but keep him as the starter? Or do you work Justin School in there, who was his replacement during the injuries earlier on this season? School was very, very up and down. Came in, looked good, and then I can argue kind of lost the job back to Staley because he was playing pretty poorly towards the middle of that year whenever uh, Staley came back from that finger injury. So it's looking like, in terms of people who are wondering, oh, we should move on from Joe Staley, yourself, you know, update school or go get a new left tackle, does not seem to be the case in terms of Staley leaving. The team would have to make the decision in terms of benching him, even though they've already played, paid him money through 2021. I expect Joe Staley to stay. He is not going to be retiring. All right, final bits of questions here. Should Staley start at right and left tackle in 2020? 
type one down below for yes, type two down below for no. And also use the hashtag 49ers to get your questions in for a mailbag video we're going to do tomorrow because it's playoff week for our Niners, meaning hashtag 49ers in the comment section down below. Get them in quick because I'm gonna only gonna pick like 10 of them and there will be about 100. Give me a good question here. Maybe give me a playoff focused question. I don't know about a free agent. You know what? Whatever you want. Hashtag 49ers down below. I'll answer as many questions as possible. There you go. All time we have for today for the Chat Sports Only 49ers YouTube channel. I am Thomas Mott as we go ahead and sign off. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Mailbag tomorrow.